Hello, in this video I will demonstrate how to set up a shade sail and this happens to be made by the company called Coolaroo. There are a variety of different shade sails on the market and I'm going to be using this one by Coolaroo which happens to be a right angle triangle measuring 3.6 by 3.6 by 5. Obviously in your installation you may choose a different shape but hopefully the principles and the methods that I show you in this video will be helpful in your DIY installation. Right, so this is what it will look like when it's complete. At least you get to see what I'm working towards while I present this video to you. More pictures are shown at the end of the video. In order to do this project, you'll need some additional accessories. Uh, I've got a handful of items here and these are some that you may find useful. Right, this is called a turnbuckle and this is useful because what it does is by adjusting this part, this inner, um, it adjusts the length between there and there. Um, this is called a snap hook and the hook allows you to connect the edge of the shade sail to the fastening point on your wall or your rafter or whatever it is you're using. Um, this is just another fastening tool which is called a D shackle and you unscrew it and then you can insert this round one of the loops and then just screw the pin back in. This item here is useful if you, one of your attachment points happens to be a wooden log. For example, maybe a gum pole or something like that. So you'll drill through the gum pole and this will come out the other side, allowing you an attachment point for your shade cell. For example, you could use that to that. And if you're wondering what this is, this allows me to use this additional cable. And if you want to tighten the cable, then you can thread it through here and adjust it. And this acts almost like a locking point along the root of this cable. And all of this you will see in the video. And lastly, this is something I'll be using. These are drilled into a masonry or a brick wall. You can see that I can immediately have an attachment point for my sale so i'm going to use these as well and all of this you'll see in the video you will need some general purpose tools such as a screwdriver drill measuring tapes but you'll see these in the video right so let's go and measure the site right before purchasing your shade sale you would have had to have done a bit of a site survey and that's what we did and what we used is measuring tapes to kind of uh, estimate the placement of the shade sail before purchasing it. Obviously, you can see the shade sails there. I did purchase it, but we did do the uh, little site survey. And interestingly enough, the one we decided on in the end was completely different to the one that we designed for. But nevertheless, the reason why you've got to do the site survey is you've got to see if there's enough space and where you'll be attaching your shade sail to. Now what is striking is how small the sail is once you put it on the floor. So what you will end up doing is probably having two, three or even four of these sails in a kite-like fashion, almost like there's kites in the air. Alright, so we have now played around with different orientations and we've decided that this will be the best layout for this first shade sail. You might be wondering why I say first. Well, some people like to have a scattered appeal, meaning they'll hang a few of these and you'll get this like floating kite effect. Well, that's what we will do in the long run and I will do follow-up videos of every time I add to this uh, little installation. Alright, so if you want to see the attachment points, we'll see the first one there is at the uh, at the tree and then the uh, right hand side you will see will attach to this pillar and the left hand side will be attached to the wall just where that ladder is maybe a bit to the left now what you're seeing on the ground there is a tape measure in the line or if you had to extend the line of that corner, uh, that edge of the triangle. And the reason why I do this is when you tighten the shade cell, you don't want it to have creases. And if you do not attach the shade cell in the correct m format, you'll find that the shade cell almost gathers. So you want to pull it from all angles to almost open it up. And that is why I've extended the line to see where am I going to attach this edge of this triangle. So if I follow that line I can see that in order for this shade cell to be hung here I'm going to have to drill quite close to the edge of that wall. Now if you have a look at this side a similar feature is shown that in order for me to have the shade cell opened up nicely I'm going to also have to drill quite close to the edge of that uh, pillar which means that maybe it's better if I shift the shade cell a little bit closer to the tree. 
so this is the side I'm talking about so it's probably better if I pull it a bit closer now there are some limitations in terms of how close the attachment point of the sail can be to the fastening point of your structure meaning the wall or the tree you've got to give at least well Kuluru recommend at least 10 percent so that means that if you've got a 3.6 meter side you need to have 36 centimeters gap between the attachment point and the base or of this tree for example so this must be at least 36 centimeters and this must be at least 36 centimeters and if this is a five meter shade cell this should be at least 50 centimeters and also you want to get the feel that it is hanging or almost like flying you don't want to have it right fastened onto the structure if you're going for that kite look right now i've shifted this a bit closer this is now 20 centimeters, which is probably too little. So I will pull it a bit back, but look what a change it makes to the other sides. You see now each one of these sides will be pulled in the correct orientation because I don't want to drill right on the edge of a brick. The reason is because the brick can split. So you want to get it more towards the center of this pillar if you are going to be drilling into the pillar. And the same goes for this side. In order not to drill right on the edge of the brick, um, I've now pulled the shade sail a bit closer to the tree trunk. And I think this is probably the best orientation for this uh, space that I have here. Now keep in mind that once you've installed this one, you can install another one behind it and a third one and a fourth one. So this is one of many. All right, for this attachment point, what I'm going to be doing is wrapping it around the tree. Now, I'm going to be using cable. I do not want to drill into the tree. I do not want to harm the tree. So I'm going to be using this cable. Now, what you'll notice is when you put cable on a tree, after a while, it actually embeds into the tree. And I'm not comfortable with that. So I'm just going to use something called Sprag. You can use Conduit. Conduit can bend. Um, it isn't as easy as Sprag. So Sprag allows you to just go around the tree. But because this is white, I'm just gonna spray it black so that you don't see it so easily. So the method that I'm gonna use is the uh, uh, sprag will be on the other side of the tree. The uh, wire will go, the cable will go through here, coming around there, and that will wrap around the tree. The cable will come out there, come out there. I'll fasten it with a little attach, a little a rope clamp there. And then I'll use the snap hook to go from that to the cable fasten to the tree Right, now my little extra pieces here are dry and that's going to wrap around the trunk of the tree. Here is the wire rope and now all I need to do is join these two sides and that is going to join to that. If you want to, you could add another join of the shackle just to give you some extra length. It's not necessary, it's totally up to you. The reason why I'm adding this one is because if you ever want to remove the shade cloth, the shade cell, you can just un hook it like that and that gives you the ability to take it down if you so desire. Now I'm not going to tighten these uh, wires very tight around the tree because remember that a tree changes shape, uh, it does grow and then it gets wider and I don't want it embedding into the trunk so I'm going to leave this a little bit loose. Some people don't like that, they want it very tight but that's your choice. Right, there are many ways of uh, fastening wire rope like this. Um, the way I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a loop like that on the one side. And then I'm going to do a similar loop on that side. And then I'm just going to use these clamps. And the one is going to clamp here like this. And that's going to go in that side like that. And this one is going to come on this side like so I'll just tighten it on this one here right so that's what it looks like and now you can use your d shackle to join them if you 
wish like that and your snap hook will hook that and the shade sail right so that's pretty much what it'll look like and now all I have to do is shift this up along the tree if you want to make this tighter it's fine if you want to loop that back and put a third one in there that's fine all right I'm not going to drill this expanding hook into the wall do not drill right at the top you, the brick will chip out or fall out or crack the, the the cement here do not put it right on the edge you'll crack the brick the brick will split do not put it there brick will split so you want to kind of put it on the center line or thereabout I have checked that if I put it here, yes, um, it will interfere a little bit with the uh, canopy of this uh, LARPA, but it's only a wire. So I'm not too worried if the wire runs in a little bit of this, uh, this hay over here. I'd rather go as high as possible because I don't want someone to walk here and have the cable in their eye line. So I'd rather go through the, um, the hay here rather than having the steel cable, the steel rope going this way. So that is why I'm choosing to go a bit higher. Right, what you'll need to do now is match the drill bit with the size of the, the hook that you're using. This uh, recommended size is a 14, so that's a 14. But what I'm going to do is I'm first going to do a pilot hole with a 12. Okay, so make sure you're drilling straight. It's on a hammer action. I'm just going to tap this in a bit. Right, now if you look at the hook, you'll see there's a nut here. You just need to tighten it. This happens to be a size 13. I'm just tightening it. And what happens is as you tighten it, it pulls on this part here and it expands. Okay, so now I'm doing the other side. Something I never mentioned is once you put the raw bolt in, the expanding bolt, you must hold the loop side and then just fasten the nut so that it expands inside the brick and that the uh, loop part does not turn all right so here you see the turn buckle in the hook okay so you can see i've hooked it in now um, i don't know if you do recall i said i don't want my setup with the shade cell right against the pillar so i'm going to extend it with some cable but it's always a good idea to keep keep checking your work keep checking the distances to make sure that when you do hang your sail that you haven't made a mistake and it's a good idea to now adjust the height to get an idea remember you don't want all three sides at the same height it becomes like a netting to catch hail and whatnot and it becomes very heavy and also doesn't look that great my advice is as the manufacturer recommend two higher than the one or one lower or two lower one high as long as there's one low side that's what you're aiming for all right so here is the side now if I pull this really tight, I will reach that hook. Now, as I said earlier, I don't want the side of the shade sail near this, uh, this canopy. So I'm now going to uh, rotate it a little bit by pulling on the other side. And I'm just going to see how much cable I need in order to keep this thing suspended about there. So that's where it will be, but maybe even about there. So I'm looking at about a 30 centimeter uh, amount of cable to join this to that hook right because I'm using a wire rope it, it actually negates the need for that because once you've tightened this you can also retension this in future but anyway in this installation I'm going to show you how I use both there you can see the uh, shade cloth with the snap hook and that can be fastened directly there and if you need to you can tension it here but the turnbuckle does give you the ability to tension it while it's taut already while this is a little bit tricky to tension right, now keeping in mind I want this more about here so as you can see when it's up it'll be more like that so I'm not going to cut this so wire because just in case I need a lot of slack and I need to shift it so I'm just going to put it there for now 
Right. I just want to bring to your attention that if you are going to be using this, make sure that when you're starting with it, start in this position because then it allows you to tighten it. However, if you had started with both these threaded rods all the way in, you, you're already at the tightest position. There's nothing more you can do. At least here, if I want to tighten it, I've got 10 centimeters of movement here. That'll go 10 centimeters in like that once you thread those rods in. Right, now I'm going to go to the other side and, and do a similar method. Right, so each side is now attached. The job now is to decide the heights and where the sail is going to be placed, more towards the right or more towards the left. Right, now what I need to do is I just need to shorten this side considerably. Right, I want to get rid of those creases, so I'm gently tugging on it. And now I can fasten it. There we go. Right, there we go. So here I can still tighten it. By about 10 centimeters. This is pretty taut. Uh, I have a snap hook here. Right now, what you need to do is you need to tighten each side. Uh, it works best if you can tighten side by side by side in order to get rid of the creases. Right, so there you can see the shade sail. It's very important that one side is lower than the other two. And if you look at the picture, you'll see the left-hand side is quite a bit lower. It's actually about a meter lower than the other two. And one of the reasons why this is important is if it hails, it's very heavy if hail catches on this shade sail. But in the way it is now, with it being at an angle, the hail will roll off. All right, it's been in a box for the last six months, so those creases will come out. It is pretty tight. I don't want to tighten it anymore. Maybe after 24 hours or so, you can give it one more tighten. Right, and just to show you, I mean, this thing is really tight. Um, as you can see, and over the next few days, these creases will, will uh, disappear. 
Now, in my installation, I never ended up using this eye bolt, but if you want to know how you use this, what you would do is, if you have a gum pole or a pole like this, you will then drill through it, and this would go there, and this would be your attachment point coming out there. Remember to put your wash on the other side. If you have to install a piece of wood instead of, like in this case, I had this pillow. If you had to put a piece of wood in the ground, well, that will be my next video when I build onto this installation. Okay, so now what is needed is one or two more of these shade sails um, to cover the rest of the area. So then you will build on, you might even share the same loops and build on to the corners that you've already used. Right, there you can see the finished installation. I haven't packed my tools away, unfortunately. There you can see the right-hand side attachment point, barely seeing the cable, and here you're seeing both. And just a note about this uh, wire rope I used, it can carry a maximum of 520 kilograms. Right, this brings me to the end of my video. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Cheers.